we begin on this very river with Rat and Mole. Rat and Mole! Mole was new to the river at that time. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, half so much worth as messing around in boats. What lies over there? That? Oh, that's just the wild wood. Let's not go there. Ratty, please! I want to row now! Not yet. Wait till you've had a few lessons. I could do it as good as you. Let me try! Ratty, my generous friend indeed. Will you forgive me? I forgive you. I'll teach you how to row. And look, there's Toad Hall. You've got to help me. It's about your rowing, I suppose. You're getting on fairly well, though you splash a good bit still. With patience and coaching. Coaching? I give that up long ago. Sheer waste of time. And there in the open, they saw a caravan shiny and new. There you are. That's the life for you embodied in that little cart. And it has everything we need to travel together today. I'm not coming, and that's flat. And what's more? Mole's going to stick by me. Aren't you, Mole? I'll always stick to you, Rat, all the same. But it might have been, well, rather fun, you know? Well, <laughs> okay. While traveling, they saw a small cloud of dust. They heard a faint vroom, vroom. Vroom, vroom! They had a moment's glimpse of a magnificent motor car. The horse ran and drove the cart backwards and crashed an irredeemable wreck. Irredeemable wreck! Vroom, vroom. You villains, I'll report you! Oh, glorious stirring sight, the poetry of motion. Oh, vroom, vroom, that swan, that swan me the thunderbolt! Toad talked this way all the way home, all while waiting for a new cart to be delivered to his house. But Toad was a very reckless driver. Everyone agreed that Badger should be the one to set Toad on the right path. I've never met Badger. Couldn't we go and call on him? It's quite out of the question because he lives in the very middle of the wild wood. But Badger never came along. I'll go introduce myself. At first, it was all fun and exciting. But then, the faces began. It was first over his shoulder he first thought he saw a face. Certainly a little narrow face with hard eyes had flashed up for an instant and then was gone. Then the whistling began. Very faint and shrill it was. It seemed to be first behind. Then, still very faint and shrill, sounded far ahead of him. Then the pattering began. As it grew, it took a regular rhythm and he knew it must, it must be the pat, pat, pat of little feet. It seemed to be first in front, then behind, then both. Meantime, Rat dozed warm and comfortable by his fireside. Hmm, my poem. Let's see. Mole, what's something that rhymes with orange? Molly? Mole? No hat, no boots. Here is footprints in the mud, leading to the wild wood! Wild, wild wood! Molly, 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 where are you? It's me, it's Rat! Ratty, is that, is that really you? Oh, I've been so frightened you wouldn't think. Oh, I quite understand. Now then, we must get back home. It's snowing hard. But the worst of it is, uh, I don't exactly know where we are. By the time they had lost all count of time, they were aching with fatigue and bruised with tumbles. They'd fallen to several holes and gotten wet through. Oh, my leg! Oh, my poor shin! Poor Mole! Yes, you've cut your shin, sure enough. I must have cut it on a branch or a stump. It's a very clean cut. Looks as if it was made by a sharp edge of something metal. It hurts just the same whatever's done it. Cut by a door scraper! Door scraper! Hooray! Ratty, what have you found? Come and see! A doormat? Why dance a jig around a doormat? Not another word, but scrape, scrape, and scratch, and dig, and hunt round! They kept digging until they found a little door painted a dark green. And engraved beside it, on a small brass plate, they could read by the aid of the moonlight. Mr. Badger! Mr. Badger! Who is it disturbing people on such a night? It's me, Rat, and my friend, Mole. And we've lost our way in the snow. Lost in the snow? And in the wildwood, too? And at this time of night? Here, sit by the one fire and tell me all the goings on the river. How's Toad going on? 
Another car wreck only last week. He's been in the hospital three times. Hospital three times! Badger, we're his friends. Oughtn't we to do something? Of course we will. Of course we will! But for now, it is much too late to do anything. Let's get some rest. And then, the next morning, Badger showed Rat and Mole a shortcut through one of his tunnels. Once outside the tunnels, they walked along, with Rat leading the way. Home! That home I left the day I found the river! Oh, come along, Mole! It's my home! My old home! I've just come across the smell of it! We'll come for it tomorrow, whatever it is you found. The snow's coming on again. <laughs> Whatever can be the matter? I know it's a shabby, dingy little place, but when you want to turn back, Ratty, I thought my heart would break. I see it all now. I'm sorry. Well, now we really better be getting on. We're going to find that home of yours. Now, no more talking. Business, use your nose. Home! They saw the dust on everything in its nail dimensions and its shabby contents. Oh, Ratty, why have I bring you to this small, cold place? What a lovely home. So <coughs> compact, so well planned. Oh, and soon we'll have a fire. We'll make a jolly night of it. But, Rat, how about your supper? Pull yourself together and help me look through the cupboards. Oh, there's a banquet for you. No bread, no butter. No caviar, no fudge. Oh, but there's tea on the counter. Oh, there is somehow mold on that tea, but why don't we make some? Oh, and while we do, tell me where you found this, oh, this, uh, <laughs> lovely table. A few days later, it was Badger's turn to call on, on Rat and Mole. Mr. Badger! The hour has come, the hour of Toad. I faithfully promise that the very first motor car I see, vroom, vroom, off I go in it. Toad, we'll stay with you until you've learned your lesson. No more speeding tickets. And no more hurting yourself in crashes. One day, while it's Ratch's turn to watch him, for. Shall you? <coughs> no, just, but no! Why should you? I'm sure there's very little a doctor could do now, anyway. If there's nothing really the matter, the doctor will tell him and cheer him up. Smart piece of work, that! He walked along until he saw a car sitting empty outside a restaurant. Room, room. I'm just going to look at it. The keys are still here. Vroom, vroom. He steered the across the street and sped it along the open country. <laughs> Toad, you were found guilty of stealing a motor car, dangerously driving, and resisting arrest. You must have another court date for your sentencing. I'll see you in one week. Guilty? That's not fair! I won't go before the judge again. I can't bear to see him so unhappy. Toad, I have an aunt who's a washerman who could help you escape. Introduce me to your worthy aunt if you would be so kind. Toad gave her a few gold coins, and in return, she gave him an apron, a shawl, and a bonnet. At last, he felt the fresh air on his anxious brow. He found a train to take him in the direction of home. But when he put his hand to where his pocket would normally be, which would normally hold his money, he found nothing. He had left everything at the jail. Oh, sir! I am a poor, unhappy washerwoman! I've lost all my money and I must get home tonight somehow! Whatever am I to do? I can help you, 
washerwoman. If you promise to wash a few shirts for me and send them along. They had covered many and many a mile. <laughs> There's another train following us, and the engine is crowded with police. Knowing it was his only chance, Toad jumped from the train. He rolled down a short hill and scrambled into the woods. Not knowing where he was, he decided to follow the canal. And along the canal came a woman steering her barge, being pulled by a horse along the water on a nearby path. A nice morning, ma'am. A nice morning, a son, perhaps. I've lost all my money and lost my way. Where might you be headed? Near to the river, ma'am. Close to a fine house called Toad Hall. Toad Hall? Why, I'm going that way myself. I'll give you a lift. So, you're in the washing business, ma'am? And are you very fond of washing? I love it. Never so happy as when I've got both arms in the wash tub. What a bit of luck meeting you. There's a heap of washing back there in the corner. It'll be a pleasure to you and a real help to me. I suppose any fool can wash. He tried coaxing. He tried slapping. He tried punching. It stayed dirty. Stay dirty! You're no washerwoman. So the woman picked up Toad and threw him in the water. I'll get you back for this! Then Toad raced up to the horse and untied it from the barge. He and the horse scalped away, leaving the woman in the barge behind. As Toad traveled, he passed a man sitting by a pot of food. Want to sell that horse of yours? What? Oh no! Who's going to take the washing to my customers? Besides, I'm much too fond of him. All the same, how much might you offer me? Four shillings. Six shillings? And he'll give me as much of your food as I can eat in one sitting. If that's not good enough, say so. I know a man near here who's wanted this horse of mine for years. What a clever toad I am! The world has held great heroes, as the history books have showed, but never a name to go down in fame compared to that of Toad. As he walked, he heard a familiar vroom vroom. But then, he noticed it was the very same car he had stolen earlier from in front of the restaurant. It's all up! It's all over now! I'm prison again! How ill-fated Toad! Oh my god! Oh dear, poor old woman fainted in the middle of the road. Let's bring him to his village. I'm feeling a great deal better. I was only thinking if I might sit in the front for a while to get the fresh air full on my face. What a sensible one. Of course you shall. your spirit. Have a try. How well she does it. Toad went a little faster. And then faster still and faster. Be careful. Sit still and you shall know what driving really is. For you are in the hands of the famous, the skillful, the entirely fearless Toad! He's the toad that saw our car last time. The car crashed into a low hedge. He ran off before the gentleman could catch him. Great. Now we don't have a car. Again. Again. Toad, as usual, comes out on top. The clever men at Oxford know all there is to be known. But none of them know half as much as intelligent Mr. Toad. But suddenly, Toad heard the police chasing after him. 
he ran and ran until he fell into the river, which carried him downstream, which carried him all the way to Rat's house. Toll told Rat all about his excellent adventures, dwelling chiefly on his own cleverness and cunning. But the more he talked and the more he boasted, the more troubled Rat became. Breaking out of jail? Stealing horses and cars? Seriously, don't you see how awfully you've behaved? I shall stroll quietly down to Toad Hall and set things in order. Stroll quietly down to Toad Hall? Do you mean to say you haven't heard? Heard what? So Rat told Toad how the stoats and weasels took over and invaded Toad Hall. Oh, Ratsy! I see that I've been a headstrong and willful Toad! Then... My advice is to wait until we have seen Mole and Badger and heard the latest news, and taken their advice in this difficult matter. But you must follow the judge's order. M Mole and Badger arrived later that day. I think I see now what Toad really ought to do. He ought to- No, he oughtn't. Nothing of that sort. What he ought to do is he ought to- Well, I shan't do it anyway. I'm not going to be ordered around by you fellows. Besides, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm Be quiet going to... once, all of you. Toad, aren't you ashamed of yourself? <laughs> there, there, never mind. We're going to let bygones be bygones and try and turn over a new leaf. <laughs> it's all over anyway. I shall never see my dear Toad Hole. <laughs> Any more? Come, cheer up, Toady. Now I'm going to tell you a great secret. Your father was a particular friend of mine. He discovered a secret passage and showed it to me. It leads right up under the butler's pantry next to the dining hall. Ah, uh -huh, that squeaky board! There's going to be a big banquet tomorrow night in Toad Hall. It's Chief Weasel's birthday. We shall creep out quietly into the butler's pantry. And rush in upon them! Very well then, our plan is settled. But the next night, while the weasels had their party. While, while the weasels, weasels had, had their party! They snuck through the secret passage. Badger, Rat, Mole, and Toad snuck up through the pantry and stormed through the dining hall, frightening and chasing out all the <laughs> It was soon settled that Toad must hold a banquet for him and all his friends. In the invitations, he included a list of entertainment for the evening. Speech! By Toad, a dress. By Toad, song. By Toad, composed by himself. Toad, there aren't going to be any speeches or any songs. Can't I just sing them one little song? No, not one little song. You know well that all of your songs are full of conceit, boasting, and vanity. And your speeches are all self-praise and exaggeration. You know you must turn over a new leaf. You are right. I know. And I am wrong. Henceforth, I will be a very different toad. However, on the evening of the banquet, the toad came home. There was panic in the parlors and howling in the halls. There was crying in the cow sheds and shrieking in the stalls when toad came home. Bang with the drums, the trumpeters are tooting, and the soldiers are saluting, and the cannon they are shooting, and the motor cars are hooting. As the hero comes. Toad, I thought we said no songs. Yes, well, everyone would have been so dearly disappointed. I'm terribly sorry. But are you really? Are you really this upset over a song? That's not the point. You keep saying sorry just to get out of trouble. Have you ever really meant it? Well, I... You do the same with your driving. You put us all in danger and then say sorry with every intention of doing it all again. I don't intend to put you in danger. Then what do you intend? Well, it's just so exciting, you know? It isn't exciting for the ones who get hurt. You could have been hurt too. You're my friend. I need you to stay. You've been very lucky so far. We've all been lucky. But now, I think it's time for a change before that luck runs out. I don't know how to change. We've tried to help you with that. I know. I'm sorry to be so much trouble. We have to learn to take care of ourselves and each other. And we'll find happiness when we're with each other. No extra excitement needed. You'll be okay if you're really willing to try this time. I think I am. 
if you are willing to help again. Friends? Friends. And now, your friends are going to make you return for your second court date. What? You would betray me like that! You have to face the consequences of what you've done. We'll stick by you no matter what. And so, Toad and his friends traveled to the courthouse. Toad trembled before the judge. Please, just let me go free. I've learned my lesson. The judge listened to the case, and he considered his options. He could listen to Toad and let him go free. He could make Toad serve community service to make up for the community he damaged with his terrible actions and to learn to be better through acts of service. He could find Toad for the prices of the damaged cars, street signs, and buildings, teaching him a lesson through the loss of his fortune. Or he could send Toad to jail, getting him the counseling and the help he needs to figure out why he made these awful decisions. <laughs> the judge listened to his conscience and reasoning. We ask you to be those voices. Clap if you think Toad should be forgiven and set free. Clap if you think Toad should be assigned community service. Clap if you think Toad should be fined. And clap if you think Toad should be sent to jail. Toad, you are a danger to your community and a danger to yourself. You must be prevented from driving, and apparently the only way to do that is to lock you in a cell where there are no cars. I sentence you to jail. While there, you will receive counseling. Do better. Locked away! A poor woeful toad! Toadie, we'll come visit you. It took time. Vroom, vroom. But eventually, vroom, Toad moved on from his obsession. I've been learning Tai Chi. Taking it one breath at a time. <sighs> one action flowing into another. It's forcing me to take things slower. Ah. Think about my actions and what they lead to. Ah. When I get out, I would like to go back to Toad Hall and make it really grand again, the way it was when my father lived there. Maybe I'll try. You only have a few more months. I know! I don't know how I'll handle it. I don't think I can do it alone. We'll help. Really? Definitely. I'm sorry for the way I treated you before. Friends? Friends. Friends.